Welcome, my wondrous students, to part two of our lecture on nucleic acid chemistry. With no fanfare or intro, I'm just going to launch in. As you guys probably already know, DNA contains all of the information needed to code for all of our physical characteristics. Each cell of our bodies contains in its nucleus all of that information. The individual cells don't typically use all of that information, however. Each cell in our body only accesses the information from its DNA that's needed for that specific cell to perform its specific functions. Generally speaking, it leaves the rest of the DNA alone. But it does have all of the same DNA that all the other cells in our bodies have. Hence, every cell in our bodies contains all of the genetic information necessary to code for all of our physical traits. So how are physical traits passed on from one cell to later copies of that cell? Well, it's through DNA replication. I'll save the details for our later biochemistry class, and I'm sure that you'll learn even more details if you take genetics. But I'll just tell you that every time our cells have to copy themselves as we grow, they do so by mitosis. Each time a cell makes a copy of itself, it has to copy all of its DNA. How does this happen? Well, when the DNA needs to be copied, enzymes open up the cell's nucleosomes and histones inside the chromosomes and expose that DNA. The two complementary DNA strands are then separated, and the cell's enzymes begin copying each of the old strands, called parent strands, of DNA. This process is called replication. Now you know, or should know, <laughs> the DNA can only be copied in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Because of this, only the daughter strand on the left can be synthesized in a continuous single piece. And the reason is because it is being synthesized in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. You'll notice that the parent strand on the left is being read in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction, which is complementary to the daughter strand being synthesized in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Now, because the daughter strand on the right over here, you'll see that it's written in this sort of lighter blue shade, is running in the 3, 5 to 5 prime direction. And remember, it can't be copied that way. It can only be copied in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Because it's running in the wrong direction, it actually has to be synthesized in discontinuous fragments from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction down. Does that sort of make sense? So it gets synthesized in discontinuous fragments from the top down, 5 prime to three prime, 3 prime. And then once it's synthesized, the individual fragments are joined together by an enzyme called DNA ligase. When the cell's entire genome has been copied, that is, all of its DNA, the two new double helices composed of one of the original parent cells together with a new copied daughter and then the same over here to the right then separate and they go into the two dividing nuclei that are formed when the replicating cell divides. Here's a cool link to a video produced by freesciencelectures.com I don't want you to worry about all of the more advanced terms that they discuss here, like lagging strand or Okazaki fragments, which I haven't introduced to yet, you yet. Just soak in the wonder of the molecular machinery found in all living cells, as well as the super cool sci-fi techno music. When DNA replicates, its strands are separated by the enzyme helicase. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins keep the strands from reannealing. One DNA strand encodes the leading strand, which forms from its 5' prime to its 3' prime end, using DNA polymerase 3. No problem here, but the lagging strand presents problems. It has to form from 5' prime to 3' prime too. It forms in pieces called Okazaki fragments. First, an RNA primase lays down an RNA primer. Then, DNA polymerase 3 lays down new DNA.
the process repeats again and again. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers with DNA. Finally, DNA ligase links the Okazaki fragment. Now here is another cool video that shows the same thing done with slightly better, albeit faster, animation. Using computer animation based on the latest research, we are now able to see how DNA is actually copied in living cells. You are looking at an assembly line of amazing miniature biochemical machines that are pulling apart the DNA double helix and cranking out a copy of each strand. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. The whirling blue molecular machine is called helicase. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules.